Knee surgery hurts. It hurts the patient. And with mechanical knee joints costing around the same as a new car, it could hurt the healthcare budget. And yet startling new evidence that suggests whether or not you get a specific treatment like knee replacement or arthroscopy may depend on where you live. The Australian Commission on Safety and Quality in Healthcare conducted a study looking at the rates of arthroscopy and knee replacements in Australia and overseas. And what they found was huge variation, even when they adjusted the data for age and sex. There's certainly variation in the rate of use of surgical procedures for knee pain, and the two common surgical procedures that we often refer to are arthroscopy, which is keyhole surgery to um, look inside the knee and clean out the knee or remove any loose fragments, and knee replacement, which is obviously major surgery. Let's look at the numbers for knee arthroscopy. It's a surgery that is a treatment for osteoarthritic knee pain is no more beneficial for the patient than fake surgery. This map shows the variation in the rates of hospital admissions for knee arthroscopies around Australia, and it's a rate per 100,000 of the population. The data include private and public hospital admissions in the year 2012 to 13, and that's for people over the age of 55. The rate of admissions for knee arthroscopies varied from 185 to 1,319 per 100,000, that's in people aged 55 and over. This was seven times higher in the area with the highest rate compared to the area with the lowest rate. Well, I think that there's a large variation because of over-diagnosis and over-treatment. If it is unwarranted variation, then it's often blamed on surgeon preference or patient preference, but it also has to do with accessibility and how easy it is to do that procedure. So if you have an area which has um, lots of doctors, lots of hospitals and lots of insured patients, it's very easy uh, to, uh, um, uh, to operate. With respect to arthroscopies and how they vary throughout different regions of Australia, the GP does have a role because they're the gatekeepers uh, in terms of referral for arthroscopies and, and so they need to think hard about what this arthroscopy is going to do for my patient. Inappropriate arthroscopy would be an arthroscopy for a patient uh, say over 40, over 50 with knee pain, uh, possibly with mechanical symptoms and with an MRI or an X-ray that shows degenerative changes in the knee, either osteoarthritis or a degenerative tear of the meniscus. Because studies have shown that arthroscopy for those indications is no better than placebo. So there's strong evidence from randomised controlled trials where half of the people get an arthroscope by chance and the other half of the people get a pretend arthroscope. So they get the cut into the knee, they, they're anaesthetised and the outcomes were identical. Well, I'm a, a, a regular swimmer and that isn't demanding, but uh, I'm also a regular boater and getting around on board a boat and doing all the things that boating involves, like hauling things on board or dealing with uh, mooring lines and whatnot, that, that requires a fair bit of agility. And I was pretty worried about my ability to do all of that when I had these symptoms. It would come and go. So I had that investigated and I was uh, told that the instability and the locking was coming about because of the floating meniscal material. There's two menisci uh, in the knee. There's one on the outer half of the knee and one on the inner half. And they sit, I've described them as like rubber washers that sit between the knuckles of the top half of the knee joint and the uh, flat part of the bottom. And they have several roles. They provide um, some degree of shock absorbing um, inside the knee. Um, and that's why we think that when they're removed, they cause increased degeneration. But they also help uh, lubricate the knee um, and help with nutrition in the knee. And they help to some degree with stability of the knee as well. It's difficult to work out how much the meniscus is responsible for pain. Many people with a meniscus tear don't have pain. And many people with a meniscus tear who have that tear corrected or removed still have pain. Most of the meniscus is without nerve fibres, so it doesn't have pain fibres, but the outer area of the meniscus does. So the, the actual um, idea of the meniscus causing knee pain 
is not clearly established. It wasn't really the pain that was the major worry, it was the sense of instability and the, the worry that the, the feeling that your knee was about to give way and that you'd fall. If you were to remove a meniscus, um, particularly if you were to remove a large proportion of the meniscus, you would accelerate osteoarthritis. However, the surgery that's done by orthopaedic surgeons is usually to remove the torn or loose part of the meniscus. The, meniscal cut. the first and investigation the recommended by a doctor was an MRI. Underwent the MRI, he looked at the film, you know, was talking to a surgeon, so the advice was predictable, surgery. Arthroscopy for degenerative conditions is generally not indicated. So that means osteoarthritis, um, degenerative tears in the meniscus, and largely undisplaced tears in the meniscus. Arthroscopy is not helpful for those procedures. The only absolute indication that's usually uh, used for arthroscopy in a meniscus tear is when the tear has flipped over and locked the knee. We call that a bucket handle tear. And the fragment of meniscus jams in the front of the knee, preventing the knee from straightening fully. And that's what we call a locked knee, and that's a common indication for arthroscopy. But that would represent a very small proportion of the total number of arthroscopies.